Dear Hecht followers, today's topic is group screen objects. Since the V18, it is possible to grouping screen objects. So first, we need two objects to group. I use a rectangle and a circle. The circle is later important to show you how the rotation uh, with objects in a group is working. I set the start angle to zero, that the line looks to the right, and I select the objects, then right click and group it to an object. If you now want to add a third object to the group, like this IO field, you can see it in the layers. There is a group object, and if you move the object to the group, you get this red frame, which is the working mode of the group. As so you see, if I move now the IO field, the group getting bigger. All objects in this group have some group properties, which is meaning if we change, for example, the back color, like to this blue, all objects getting this change. If I double click on the circle, you can change the color for each object separate again. So the, the last change wins. This group interface depends on the objects you have in the group. So we want to rotate. So we do a rotation of the group like 30% and you see the group complete changes. If you double click on it, you see in the working mode, it is straight and we can move the objects and arrange them. By release the group, he jumps back to the 30 degrees. Now I add a rotation angle 60% to the circle and you see if I release them, he sum up both of it. So we have 60 degrees from the circle and 30 degrees from the group and both together are 90 degrees. That's why the line is, shows downwards. To link and tag, you can also use track and drop. So you see if I move the tag to the IO field, you get this blue frame in the position of the working mode. And now you see, you check this tag. I have drag and drop is connected to this IO field. So this is also working in the group. In the next step, we want to modify the group via the scripting interface. So I add here a switch for toggling the visibility of the whole group. So I use the change event that if every time I click on the switch in the script, I use an if else statement and as condition, the value of the switch itself. So the value getting true if I the switch is true. I use screen item and you see the group is listed in the screen objects and has the property visibility or visible. And if the condition is true, the group should be visible. I copy the statement and change the true to the false. Now we load the runtime and you see by pressing the switch, I can set the group visible and invisible. After changing the visibility of the whole group, we want to change an interface of the group. So I use a button with a click event to modify the property of the group. So we use the same syntax, screen.items, and we're browsing the group. And if you click dot, they are not all properties listed. So if we go to the group itself, we have the property interface and you see, for example, the fill level. We go back to the button and paste the statement and you see it's called properties.fill level. So if you know the syntax, you can also use properties.background color. And we change the fill level to 50%. And now we activate this fill level. You see not all pro objects in the group has a fill level, like the IO field doesn't. Which is meaning if we now click in the runtime the button, the objects which have this property get filled by 50%. It is also possible to have group of objects inside of a faceplate. 
To show you this, I select all my screen objects and create a faceplate. You can right click, this is also a new functionality in the V18, I guess, to see all the objects are now on the faceplate. What I want to do is I want to link a faceplate interface to the group interface. Yeah. Um, to do this, I add a property interface like the color that you can add the color on the faceplate instance. And we go to the loaded event of the faceplate container or on the faceplate screen. And the only difference is we use faceplate dot item instead of screen. You see, you can also pick here the group and you want to change the back color. You can use also the trick with the right click to the property. We go back to the loaded event and we add it here. And now we link the interface. There's the snippet for the property interface. We copy it. And now we need the name of the interface. I will change it to group color that is more clear. And copy the name going back to the screen and replace the displace holder. Okay, let us check uh, some issues here. Yeah, the first one, I guess, is the linked tag from the IO field. That's correct because um, this tag is not existing in the container, so I will remove it. And the additional issues where, let us check again. Ah, okay, this is inside of the script. We need to replace screen with faceplate. And after we do this, um, this should work that we can set the visibility of the group and modify the fill level again inside of the faceplate. Yes, this looks good. So we will place this faceplate next to the group and change the color from the interface to green. And in the runtime, you see I click to this fill level, 50%, everything inside the screen and the visibility is also working. I hope this video gets you an overview of what is possible with groups in the V18. See you.